Hello. So I said I would do videos on games that I got for Christmas this year. So I got, uh, well, the one from My Secret Santa, which I already did. That was Root. I got two other games for Christmas, um, this being one of them. So I know there's about 2.8 billion Wingspan videos out there, so I'm sure this will not get very many views. But I did say I would do videos on games I got for Christmas. And so this is next on the list. I um, had never played it before. I mean, obviously I've heard good things about it for a couple of years now. But uh, anyway, I wanted something that maybe my family might play with me because it's hard for me to get my wife and my daughter to play any of the more Amera, Amera Thrash, Amera Trash type games that I really enjoy. So... I had uh, put this on one of my wish lists, wish lists for Christmas, and I got it. So I did go ahead and play it solo um, today, and uh, now I'm going to do a how to set up play and a couple of example turns. All right. So the first thing to set up is shuffle this huge stack of uh, I think it's 170 cards, and then place uh, three cards face up in this tray then you create a supply of these egg tokens and food tokens the game does come with these uh, plastic containers <clears throat> I guess it's enough when you're putting the game away storing the game but it seems like I needed one more container in order to separate have a little container for each of these <clears throat> food and egg tokens but anyway this is how I'm going to make do in the manual it doesn't show them in these containers at all they're just in piles on the board or on the table so however you want to do it all right next you take these five food dice and toss them in the back of this bird feeder dice tower and that will give you your initial available food then there's this gold board which has two sides. Um, I think it said this blue side was more for beginners and the green side is more for the standard game. So I'm going to use the green side for the standard game. All right, then you'll just kind of shuffle up these gold tiles and pick four random goals. And you're kind of supposed to just do it randomly. So however that works best for you <laughs> for this setup example I'm just gonna do it like this so I guess you're kinda supposed to draw them maybe from a opaque container or something so you don't know what you're drawing um, then the rest of these uh, just go back in the box alright then you shuffle up this deck of bonus cards and just set it near the play area alright all right, uh, then each player takes one of these uh, large player mats. I'm setting up for a three-player game, so that's all I had room for on my table here. Then each player will take eight action cubes of their color. I'm playing with red, green, <laughs> excuse me, red, <laughs> green, and blue. That's blue, not red. And each player gets two bonus cards, so I'll just deal those to each player. Alright, then you deal five bird cards to each player. So one, two, three, four, five. I'll do that to the other players and come back. Alright, got five cards for this player, five bird cards for this player, and five bird cards for this player. And then each player takes one of each food token. So you have uh, rodent, seed, fruit, fish, and invertebrate. So each player will get one of each. Okay, and now I've got uh, one of each for each player. Okay, then each player has to decide what bird cards they're going to keep. 
and for each bird card they keep they have to discard one of their uh, food tokens and we should probably look at these bird cards for a second just to help make that decision this icon here shows which um, habitat you will be able to play this bird into so you have the wetlands the grasslands and the forest so that this icon shows this bird will go into the wetlands and it also shows what food this bird requires when you want to play the bird onto your player mat so this this bird will require an invertebrate and a fish whereas this card just requires an invertebrate uh, this one will require an invertebrate and a fruit so when you're deciding what cards you want to keep for every card you keep you've got to discard a food but you also got to keep in mind that um, to be able to play those birds you'll need that food um, the food type shown to be able to play it so I don't know I mean obviously I don't after one play I don't know any good strategies but we'll say I'm gonna keep two birds so I gotta discard two food tokens well I know I wanna keep a rodent and an invertebrate and uh, so I'll probably discard uh, I'll keep this bird too and then I gotta discard three food tokens so I'll dis because I'm keeping three discarding two I gotta um, since I'm keeping three I gotta discard three food tokens so I'm gonna discard these three so I just put those back in their piles alright I'll make that decision for the other two players and come back alright this player kept these two bird cards so he had to get rid of two food tokens so he still has three remaining and this player kept these two bird cards so he had to get rid of two food tokens and he still has three remaining alright then each player chooses one of the bonus cards they received and has to um, discard the other so these are for bonus port points at the end of the game so this one um, I think that's birds with the predator power um, so for each bird you have on your board with a predator power you'll get two points for each and this one uh, birds with uh, this type of nest which is cavity nest so for each bird you have on your player mat at the end of the game that has a cavity nest well we didn't look, finish looking at the bird card so I showed you this tells you what food they need what habitat they go into this shows what how many points it'll be worth at the end of the game and then this shows the type of nest it uses so this bird happens to use a, a cavity nest while this bird uses a ground nest and then this icon here shows how many um, eggs can be placed on this bird card when you take the lay eggs action this icon just shows the wingspan of this particular bird this is the name of the bird um, and I guess it's Latin uh, official name and uh, this is a power this bird uh, can give you and we'll get into that later when we go over the rules and then this just shows uh, what area of the world that uh, that bird is located in so North America it looks like for this one anyway that's the icons on those birds so back to set up you choose one of these um, bonus cards to keep since I looks like one of the birds I have does have the cavity nest I'm gonna go ahead with this bonus card and discard this one to my bonus card discard pile and this guy um, I don't know we'll just say he's gonna choose this one 
And this guy, birds with colors in their names. Birds that only live in the wetlands. Well, he has one wetland bird. I don't know. We'll go with that one. And finally, you uh, choose a first player and just give them the first player token. So I'm going to go with blue as my first player. And then we'll go clockwise. So it'll be blue, then red, then green. That's it. Now we're all set up. Alright, so how do you play? Well, the game is going to be played over four rounds. At the end of each round, you'll do some bonus scoring, um, which is what these tiles are. And then at the end of the fourth round, you'll do the end of game scoring. So, during each round, each player will take uh, a number of turns up to the number of um, action cubes they have. Each player will take one action um, and then just rotate around. So first player will use one of his action cubes. Then the second player will use one of his. Then the third player will use one of his. And so forth, rotating until um, all the action cubes are used. So, uh, what can you do on your turn? Well, one of the actions you could take is play a bird. And if you're going to play a bird... You put your action cube on the first available column um, of where you're going to place your bird. So, of course, in the uh, when you have no birds, <laughs> you can place you can use the first column. Now, once you've placed one grassland bird here, when you want to place your second grassland bird, you would have to play in this column. And um, the first column costs no eggs, but as you start placing birds in these other columns, you can see they have a cost of one egg, one egg. When you get out here, two eggs and two eggs. And of course, besides paying the egg cost once you get out here, you also you know, must pay the food cost of that bird. So, if I wanted to... Um, take the play a bird action um, right here at the beginning of the game I would place my action cube there and like if I wanted to play this bird it goes in the forest so that spot is um, there and it costs one invertebrate to play it so no eggs since it's in the first column I would play that card there it's in the forest it goes in the uh, forest habitat column and then I would have to discard an invertebrate to pay its food cost. Now some cards have a when played um, action um, like this one. So if I played this bird um, onto the you know grassland and paid its food cost of an invertebrate and a fruit, it also has this when played. So you would do that immediately, um, play a second bird in the grassland, pay its normal cost. Now, of course, that's optional if you don't have a second bird that, to go in the grasslands or um, couldn't pay its cost, then you can't do it. But if you did, then you could do that. Now, say on a... Oh, and after you take an action, you slide your cube... Um, you know, place a bird action. After you've placed your bird, you slide your action cube over to the left. Now, say on a future turn, I wanted to play this barred owl, which would cost me a rodent. So, um, we'll just pretend I've got an egg on one of my birds. Because you can, when you pay this egg cost, you can take it off any of the birds you have on your board. So we'll just pretend I have that one. So if I wanted to take a place a bird action to place this barred owl here, I would do that. Since I'm in this column, I have to uh, pay the one egg cost. So I would discard that egg and then uh, pay the food cost of the one rodent. So I'd have to have discard that. And then again, you just slide your token over to the left. Alright, so that's the play a bird action. The other action you can do is the gain food action. So you always place your action 
uh, marker in the leftmost available column. So if I had a, a bird placed in this column, then the next first most available column would be this one. But if I have no birds in that column, then the first one I can use is this one. So when you do the gain of food action, if you're placing it, your action marker here, then you can gain one food from the dice tray of available food. So when you do that, you can just take one of the dice out of the tray. So if you want an invertebrate food, take that out of the available dice grab yourself an invertebrate token and put it in your play area. Now, um, once, you know, as players use these dice to get food, you know, eventually it's going to become empty. So whenever it's empty, as soon as it's empty, then you just re-roll all five of the dice. Also, if ever... Um, all the remaining, you, if ever you go to take a uh, food token for any reason and all the remaining food tokens are of the same face and you don't want one of those, you can re-roll at that point. If they're all of the same face, all the remaining dice are the same face, then you can re-roll them. And actually you don't just re-roll the three that were <laughs> or the three however many are showing the same face i just showed you just re-rolled those but actually you would re-roll all of them so if they're all showing the same face and you don't want one of those of course if you want one of those you can just take one of those but if not then if they're all showing the same face then you re-roll all five day all five dice and um also that includes even if there's one dice left so if there's one die left and you have to take a, a a food token for any reason. You don't want that one. Then you can re-roll all five dice. Now, if there's, you know, if it's like that and two have the same face but one doesn't, then you can't re-roll. It's only if they all have the same face. Now, if it was like that and you had to take a, a, a food token, then that would allow you to re-roll re -roll all five because those two just have the same face. So when you do that, when you choose a die and take the food token, then you just put that into your supply. And uh, of course you can use those later when you play a bird to pay the food cost of the bird. Now, if you have a, a bird here and you take the gain food action, and you, so you're putting your action marker over here, you could take one die from the bird feeder and then optionally optionally you could discard one of the bird cards from your hand to take another food from the feeder again that's optional then you start taking any uh, actions in this brown bar from right to left so since you got your food then you would move your marker here and it says when activated gain one invertebrate from the supply so you would just take that directly from the supply and then move your marker over there if you had two birds in the forest and you take a gain food action well then you would put your marker here which would allow you to take two food from the bird feeder then you would move your marker here and take this <clears throat> when activated look at a bird card um, from the deck I guess if that's the wingspan is less than 75 millimeters tuck it behind this bird which just means put it underneath it um, if not discard it then you would go here and take this action so as you as you get birds on a uh, track then you would take the action you know further over to the right and then you can optionally take these when activated um, powers as you go back down and then finally you're at the far left okay another action you can take is the lay eggs so again if you have no bird in this column um, first time you play you place one of your action markers there 
You can take two eggs from the supply, the color doesn't matter, and place them on a bird that you have in play. So currently I don't have any, but if I, let's go back to my example, say I had, uh, say I had already played these two birds and I take the lay eggs action, well I have to take it here because it's the leftmost available space. So I could get two eggs. And then you can put them on any birds in your play mat. And again, this shows the maximum number of eggs that they're allowed to have. So I could just say I'm going to put one on this bird and one on this bird. Now in this space, you have um, you get two eggs, but then optionally you can discard any one food. So that symbol always means any one food. So you could discard one food from your play area to get another egg and place it on any bird in your play area. Then I would move to the left if I had some kind of, um, if I had a bird that had a power here, then I would activate that and finally move your action token to the far left and then your turn is done. And finally, the last action you could take is the draw bird cards action. So if you take this first space, you can draw one bird card. Now you can draw it from the available displayed cards or you can draw one from the top of the deck. If you take one from the available displayed cards, you don't replace it till the end of your turn. So if, uh, you know, say you had I know this bird doesn't go in this habitat, but just as an example, if you had a bird heart here and a bird here, and you so you're taking, you decide to take the draw bird card actions, you would have to put your action token in this left most available space so you could draw two cards. So if you drew this one, you don't immediately uh, get to refill that spot, so you have to draw from one of the available remaining two or draw one from the top. And then at the end of your turn, then you refill any um, slots that are empty. And again, that works the same where then you would move your token here and take any power that was on that bird. Move your token here and take uh, the action of whatever power was on that bird. And then finally, uh, you're on the far left and that ends your turn. So those are the four actions you take. So each player, you know, just takes turns uh, taking an action. And every time you take an action, one of your cubes will end up on the far left side of your board. So in the first round, everybody's going to get eight actions. And then you'll have the end of round. So at that point, at the end of round, first thing you do is everybody removes all their action cubes from the uh, player mat. Then the next thing you'll do is score your goal. So you get, use one of your action cubes to mark your score on the goal for the end of round one. So for instance, this one was have the most birds in a grassland. So whoever had ended up playing the most birds into the grassland row would get first place and they would put one of their action cubes there. And at the end of the game, they'll score four points. Uh, whoever had second most, you know, would put one of their cubes there. Now, if you tie for, you know, a place, then whoever, the tied players both place their markers there. And then um, when you're scoring, you'll add that place and the next place uh, together and divide by the number of tied players and round down. But to get any points at all, you have to have, had, you know, for this, in this instance where it's most birds in the grass, if you had no birds in the grassland, and even if there was only two players playing, you can't score any points. So if, uh, you know, if blue player had one bird in the grassland, he would get first place. If the second player had no birds in the grassland. He can't get a point for second place. He just gets zero points. You have to at least met the goal with at least one um, bird or, or whatever it is. You can't have not met it with anything or you just score zero. So each player will put their 
cube in whatever place they got and then you discard all the face up uh, birds on this tray and deal you know three more birds to the tray and finally you rotate your the first player token uh, clockwise to the next player and they'll start the next round now because each player has placed a cube you know up on the score track in the next round you will only have seven actions to take instead of eight and then of course in the next round you'll only have six and in the final round you'll only have five actions to take And there is an appendix that gives detail on, you know, what each of these icons mean for these bonuses and, um, you know, some of the other more, maybe more explanation on a bird's power or something. But they're usually pretty simple. This is birds in the grassland, uh, birds with a platform type nest, total birds, so whoever has the most birds on their player mat. And this one is most eggs in the forest. So, you know, you have however many birds in your forest uh, row. And then you would have eggs on those birds. So whoever has the most eggs in the forest row would uh, score that bonus point at the end of round four. Or those bonus points at the end of round four. And at the end of the game is where you actually add up your score. So comes with this pad of uh, you know score scoring pad so each player will have you know blue red green whatever so the first thing you score is birds that are on your player mat so as I showed each bird has a point value so you just add up all the point values of all the birds on your player mat and you put that total here next is bonus card so we talked about you start with you know the one bonus card you get to keep at the beginning of the game there's ways to get other bonus cards um, from powers of birds and such during the game so then you just score your bonus card so like this one um, birds with the cavity nest if you have four or five birds on your player mat that have the cavity nest you would score four points if you had uh, six or more birds on your player mat that had a cavity nest you would score seven points there is one type of nest uh, that's shown on the bird cards that has a star, and that's like a wild card nest, so it counts as any type of nest. So anyway, then each player will score their uh, bonus cards and put those totals there. Then you'll uh, add your total from all your end of round goals, so each player will add up however many points they got from round one goal, round two goal, and so forth. Put that total there then you get one point for each egg you have on birds um, on your player mat so you just count the total number of eggs you've got on your birds put that score there food on cards some some birds will have a power that that uh, I'll let you cash foods on a card so it'll say you know get it get a certain food token and cash it on this card so you just uh, put put that food token on the card that bird card so at this point you get um, one point for each food card you have cashed on a bird again that's a a power um, that will that some birds will have and finally tucked cards uh, I think we saw um, one well like this this one was an example you know when you activate this power uh, look at a bird card from the deck if the wingspan is 75 millimeters or less tuck it behind this card so for every there are other birds with other options to tuck cards under them and so for every tucked card you have under a bird in your play area You'll get another point. Total that up. Player with the highest total wins wingspan. So those are the rules. It's really pretty simple. There's only four possible actions each player can take. Um, so why don't we go over a couple of uh, example turns. 
All right, <clears throat> so we'll start with the first player, the blue, blue player. Again, we all have uh, eight cubes at the beginning of this round. He's first player. Now we know that he has a bonus that he'll get birds with the cavity nest. He'll get more points. And we know the goal for round one is to have most birds in the grassland. So he may want to try to get some of his birds in the grassland. He's got three bird cards that he kept from the beginning of the setup. This one costs an invertebrate and a fruit to play. Well, he's only got an invertebrate, no, <laughs> invertebrate and a rat. So he really doesn't have what he needs to play that one. So maybe he wants to get a food. So if we look at what's in the food tray, there's uh, nothing good there. He needs a fruit, and it's three invertebrates and two rats. So that's not really what he needs. So let's just say he's going to he's going to go ahead and play this. Cost one invertebrate to play. So he's going to do a play a bird. He's playing it into this column. So he takes his action, puts it there. It's a forest habitat, so he puts it in the forest, and he's got to pay his one invertebrate. And that's his turn. Now he slides his thing over there. Alright, so we're at player two. He has this bonus of uh, birds that can only live in the wetlands. Well, he kept two birds. One of them is a wetland bird, and it requires a uh, seed and, and a wild you know anything so he can play that so he thinks he wants to play that too so he's going to put his action cube on the play a bird and it's in the first column so he's going to play his bird down here it's a wetland so he has to play it in the wetlands and he has to pay a seed and any other thing so he's got a seed and he'll play this invertebrate now i don't think i mentioned in the uh rules overview but when you're paying food to play a bird you can pay any two food to make it something else so if you needed say I needed a uh, a rodent and I had two fruits or a fruit and a seed well I could use both of those to make it a rodent so and it kind of shows you there so any two foods can equal one food type but we didn't have to do that, so we've paid uh, the food cost to play this bird here, and now we just slide our token over. So that's the end of his turn. All right, now we're at green. Well, he's got a bonus of birds that eat fruit, but neither of the birds he kept at the beginning uh, are fruit eaters, so that's not too helpful. Also, neither one is a wetland bird, which we know... Um, well, we don't care about that because the bonus is grassland. So we do have a grassland bird, and we do um, have a seed, which is what it costs. So he's going to play that too. So he's going to also do play a bird. This one grow, goes in the grassland, so he's got to play it into the grassland. And it costs one seed, which he has. So he'll play that, and that's the end of his turn. All right, we're back to player one, and uh, he's got a rodent, and he's got this uh, barred owl that eats rodents, so he could play that, but that goes in the forest, and he would have to put it here, which is going to cost an egg. Well, he doesn't have any eggs, so that doesn't really, uh, he can't play him. So what if he goes ahead, goes ahead and does... Uh, the lay eggs action so first available spot is this one so he gets two eggs well, again the color you can choose whatever color strikes your fancy and this bird can actually hold three eggs so he's gonna put both eggs on there and now he just slides this down and that's his turn now he's used two of his actions alright now we're back to the red player well he's got this one bird in his hand that uh, goes in the forest but it costs an invertebrate and a fruit and he's only got a fruit um, we know that the the round one goal is to have grassland birds and he doesn't have any in his hand there is one 
this common night hawk up in the available cards that can go in any habitat. So he might want to try to get that. Uh-oh, sun's come out. Let me fix that. All right, close my shades. Now it'll probably get dark again here in a minute. But anyway, so we'll just, and just to show, uh, we'll show he's going to take, for his second action, he's going to do the draw bird cards action. But he has to put his his to action token here because it's the leftmost available space. So for this one, he gets to draw a bird card. And then if he had an egg, he could discard an egg and optionally draw a second bird card. But he doesn't have any eggs, so he's just going to draw one bird card. Now he could take any of these or one off the top. And he's going to take this one. It just goes into his hand. And we don't refill that yet. We refill it at the end of his turn. Again, I've got no egg to do this optional thing. So now I move my marker here, and now I can do this power. When activated, all players draw one bird card from the deck. So... He's going to draw one. First player is going to draw one. And, or actually, I guess this guy probably should have drawn one next and then first player. But every player, um, as it says here, all players draw one from the deck. Then his marker goes here, and that's the end of his turn. So now he will refill this empty spot on the available cards. All right, we're back to Green's turn. Now he did get a, another grassland bird, but it requires an invertebrate and a seed. He doesn't have a seed, so let's do a get some food action. Well, it's not any food he wants there, but uh, let's do it anyway just to show it. So uh, gain food, so he puts his token there. So I get to gain one food from here. Now they're not all the same, they're close to all the same, but they're not all the same. So I'll gain, I can't re-roll them, but I'll take that dice out and gain an invertebrate and that goes in my pile and my marker slides over and that's it for my second turn. All right, we're back to first player. You know, they've each taken two actions, so they still have six actions left um, for this first round. So, um, now that we have eggs, we could play this barred owl because he goes in the force, it's going to cost us an egg. So let's do that. We're going to play a bird. So we put our action token there that does cost us an egg. So we got to discard an egg off of that bird and we can put the barred owl in there and then we have to discard a rodent. He cost a rodent to play. So we'll put that there and we're done with the, uh, action. So that's the end of his turn. Alright, we're back here to red. Uh, he probably wants to play some of these birds, but the only food he's got is this fruit. So he's going to do the gain of food action. So he's going to take this invertebrate dice, gain an invertebrate, put it with his food. And he slides down, and that's the end of his turn. Alright, we're back here to green. Um, he does have another grassland bird. Um, but he's only got two invertebrates and a, and a uh, fruit. And this one costs an invertebrate and a seed. But, as I said, we could spend these two to become a seed. Any two can become something else. So, but that goes in the grassland and that's going to cost an egg to play there and he doesn't have an egg. So he thinks he probably needs to do the lay an egg action also. So, or lay eggs. So he wants to take the lay eggs action. The first available space is this one. That gets him two eggs. So we'll just say he's going to put two pink. He'll put them here on this uh, scaled quail and it can hold up to six eggs and then optionally he could discard a food for another egg but he doesn't want to do that but now this marker moves down here and he gets to do this power when activated lay one egg on this bird so now he gets to put another egg on that bird and now his marker goes to the far left and that's the end of his turn Alright, we'll do one more turn for each player and then off camera I'll 
go to the end of round and then we'll show end of round scoring and then we'll wrap it up. So uh, we'll just say this guy, uh, we're back to blue, he's first player. He wants to get, he doesn't have any food so he can't play any more birds. So he wants to get some food. So he's going to, the first available um, gain food spot is here, which allows him to gain two food. So he'll come over here. Now, unfortunately, again, there's not a good variety. So he's going to get one invertebrate. And he'll put that in his play area. Now he can get one more because he gets two for this spot. Well, now because all the remaining faces are the same and he doesn't want a rodent because the remaining faces are the same, he can re-roll all five. So now... Um, thinking he wants this fruit so now he gets to gain this fruit put that token in his area so now he's gonna has done his two gain foods but now he gets to move here and activate this power when activated look at the top card of the deck so let's look at that if 75 if wingspan is less than 75 centimeters which it is it's only 43 centimeters then tuck it behind this bird. So let's do that. So when you tuck it behind, you just put it behind it, like so. All right, he's done that, and he'll get a point for that at the end of the game. Now we move here, and we activate this power. When activated, gain one uh, invertebrate from the supply. So we just take it from the supply, put it in our play area, and Move our marker there, and now it's his turn is done. All right, we're back to red. Um, again, he may want to play this to have a bird in the grassland to score the goal, but he doesn't have a seed. He could do a get a food action to get that, but he thinks what he's going to do is play this bird. He's got the food to play it, so he's going to do a play a bird action to the first column. This goes in the forest habitat, so he's put it in the forest, and it, he's got to do a uh, invertebrate and a seed, which he has, and that's it. He did a play a bird, just slide his marker over. That's the end of his turn. Okay, finally we're back to green. He wants to get another bird in his grassland, you know, again because of that bonus at the end of this round. So. He's going to do a play a bird. He's got to play it into the second column because that's his available grassland space. That does cost an egg, so he's going to discard an egg. And then he's going to play this grassland bird, and that costs him an invertebrate and a seed. Well, here's an invertebrate. He doesn't have a seed, but he can discard any other two foods to become the one seed. So he's going to discard these two. And that pays his seed cost. Alright, so that was his play a bird. So we'll go back there. Okay, I've played ahead a few turns so that each player, you know, we're on their last action for the round. So we're back here to the blue player. Now, he doesn't have any more birds that can go in the grassland to go towards this bonus. But he does know that... Um, his bonus card, he's looking for birds with cavity nests, and he's got one that has that, so I think he wants to play that one. So you'll see its food, it can either be an invertebrate or a seed or a fruit. When it's got the slashings, it means, you know, one of those, not all of those. So he's going to do, uh, again, that goes in the forest, so he's got to play it here, and that's going to cost him an egg. He does have one egg. And then uh, he will play it right there, and he'll pay an invertebrate for that. And then he can go, oh, that's it. So that's it for his play bird. That's the end of his turns for the round. All right, we'll come back here. Well, he's only got one bird in the grassland. Um, he has this bird which could go in the grassland, but it takes 
two invertebrates and he's only got one so fortunately I think he's just going to get food um, so he'll put his marker here to do the gain food action so he gains one he'll take an invertebrate dice to gain an invertebrate then he can go here and when activated gain one food from the bird feeder so he gets his choice of what to gain here so he'll take a fruit put that in his supply and that's going to be his last action for the round and he does have two already in the grassland he doesn't have any other birds that can go in the grassland but his uh, end of game bonus is to have birds that can that eat fruit so none of the birds that he's got on there so far have that but this one does so I think he's going to do a play a bird so goes in the first column because he doesn't have any uh, in the forest yet so he plays that into the forest and it costs a seed and a fruit which is what he has and he got this uh, when played action draw two new bonus cards and keep one so we get to do that so he gets to decide on birds with platform nest or birds with wingspans over 65 centimeters well none of the ones he has played yet have that but neither one have platform nest either so uh, I think we'll go with birds with platform nest so he'll discard this other one so now he's got two bonus cards that uh, you know he needs to try to go for but anyway play a bird that was his action so now that's the end of the round so first thing we do at the end of the round uh, is everybody just clears all their action cubes off their board. Alright. Alright, now each player will place an action cube to mark their score on the goal. Well, he only had... Uh, one bird in the grassland remember the goal for the round one is birds in the grassland so he had two and he had one so um, green gets first place on that so at the end of the game he'll score four points and because blue and red both had one they tie for second place and I think that'll give them zero points because um, you yeah, add the next two up, so it'd be one plus zero is zero is one, and then divide by two, that's going to be half, and you round down. So they'll actually get no points for that. All right, then we discard the face-up bird cards and redraw new ones. And then rotate the first player marker. So now red will be first player next round. Then we'd start the next round. And as I mentioned in the rules, now instead of having seven actions for this round, each player will only, I mean, instead of having eight actions for this round, each player will only have seven. And of course, their goal for this round is to have uh, most birds with. Uh, platform nest but at the same time you have to remember what the end of game scoring are is you know the birds you put down you know they each have a point value so you you may want to go for putting higher point value birds down instead of trying to meet these goals or you know trying to meet your bonus card and then also you want to get eggs out on your birds because at the end of the game you get a point for every egg and um of course at the end of the game that's when you actually get your points for your your uh, goals for each round and then you know as you saw we were tucking some cards under this barred owl because of his power and so he'll get a point for every um, card that's tucked under him so you gotta kind of besides trying to meet those goals in your bonuses you also have to keep in mind you're trying to play higher point birds like this bird is zero points so that's not too good whereas you know this one's four this one's four this one's two so 
Um, you know, we got up here a six and a nine point bird. And again, I've only played it once, so I don't really know what's the best strategies to go for, whether it's good to just go for a highest point birds or, you know, more eggs. I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, uh, that's, that's the game. I'm sure you have a good idea how it plays. One thing I didn't talk about, some birds will have this uh, once in between t turns. So this activates if this thing's happened. So... When another player takes the lay eggs action, this bird gets one egg on another bird with a ground nest. So some of these birds will have these actions where they actually will activate when another player does something. But it only can activate once in between your turns. So if one player activates this and then another player goes before your turn and they would do the same thing that would activate it again, well, it doesn't activate again. It's only once between your turns but anyway that was one one power or something on a bird i hadn't uh, mentioned so again uh one play i can see the appeal of this game i mean if if you're somebody that really loves birds then i guess you would really love it but i thought it was i thought it was fun the one play through again i'll hopefully uh get to play it with my wife and daughter this weekend and see what they think of it and if they enjoy it then you know i'll be happy it's definitely probably not something i would play with my uh, well i may play it with my normal gaming buddies but um you know we're we're more into the rune wars and you know conan that kind of thing than we are these uh you are euro games but i do enjoy these and from the you know from the one play I had and then doing this playthrough I, I do think it uh, is fun and I do see the appeal of it so uh, I think it might be a keeper anyway uh, hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.